All right, hey everybody, welcome to Black Docs Talk. I'm Dr. Jeremy Hockstrom. I'm Dr. Jermaine Hockstrom. And I'm Dr. Julie Cadet. And today we are going to be talking about our road to medicine, the things that have kind of led us to where we are now. So I guess the first question is, what inspired you to become a doctor? Well, for me, um, I'm originally from Miami, Florida. So what inspired me was actually my father. He's a psychiatrist and a family physician. Um, so I was fortunate you know, to be exposed uh, early on. I would go to his office while he's seeing patients. Um, and I would always want to help, whether it was helping patients fill out forms or even just walk them to the uh, patient's room. So that's one of many reasons why uh, I became interested in medicine. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I would say for me, um, you know, kind of growing up, we always kind of had, uh, so our mother's side of the family is from uh, Mississippi. So it's more rural where she is. And so from there, um, I remember just kind of growing up, visiting them, there was always sort of a lack of uh, access to healthcare. You know, they would drive 30 to 45 minutes to go and be able to see, uh, you know, at least to a high quality uh, center. And um, so just kind of growing up seeing a lot of that, that those healthcare disparities, you know, I knew kind of seeing firsthand that there was, uh, there definitely shortage of physicians at, you know, in general, especially in prime primary care. Um, and then kind of from there, just seeing a lack of, you know, African-American presence, and especially with African-American male presence in, in medicine was another reason why I wanted to go into this field because for me, you know, I wasn't exactly always inspired to pursue medicine because I can always see myself in that role. But so I figured, you know, if I can get in, get in there and kind of help make that difference and other people will be able to see me and hopefully be inspired by that too. Yeah. You know, I think for me, it's, it falls along very similar lines. I'm kind of growing up, I kind of always had an interest um, in the, the sciences and kind of, I didn't really know that I wanted to go into medicine kind of at the very beginning, you know, I was kind of interested in architecture at first. Uh, at one point, I thought I wanted to go to, to law school, uh, but eventually somewhere along the way, I kind of found my interest in, in, in medicine and wanted to help people and learning how I can use um, science to kind of help people better. Um, so that's kind of where I went and then kind of growing up, you know, we would do volunteering at the hospital um, and just different things along those, those lines. We, we would try out different, different doctors. Um, so that really kind of fostered my, my interest. Yeah. And so when kind of going into medicine, you know, there are a lot of different paths that people take from, you know, not for everybody, it's not always as straightforward as going from undergrad to medical school then to res residency. So um, I guess we can start with, you know, Kind of what was your path? I'll, we can start with you, Julie. Okay, so uh, my path definitely was not, and my path was, definitely was not a straight path. <laughs> um, so I've been volunteering since I could remember, since like being in, I would say, like middle yeah. school. <laughs> um, just, just even volunteering like uh, homeless shelters, like my school incorporated that for us. Um, you know, moving forward into high school. I just love just helping and giving back to others and just seeing how appreciated they were. Um, so, you know, that I can, I continue that doing that. Um, and then moving forward, um, I would, I knew, like I would ask people who I knew were in the medical field, you know, what does it take? What do I have to do? Um, and they said you need a mentor. So I ended up, at that time, I didn't really know what specialty I'd want to do. I just knew that I liked medicine. Um, so I was able to contact like a pediatrician who I still speak to today um, and I've known her since high school and she's been my mentor um, despite you know all my challenges and has been very supportive um, so in high school I was always volunteering I was studying they said that you need to do biology um, looking back maybe I would have majored in something else but still gone to medical school <laughs> um, but biology was great. Uh, I ended up majoring in that in um, college. Uh, I was also an, uh, an athlete, so I had to be able to balance just studying biology, pre-med. Oh, okay. um, so, you, so you were an athlete in college too? Yeah. Oh, okay, what, what did you play? I was just kind of curious. <laughs> I play tennis. Oh, really? Um, we play tennis too. Not, not, not in, not in, um, not in uh, college, but we play a lot in high school. Oh, like, then I know I do play tennis. Then we should play. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so I majored in uh, biology and then was balancing that. You know, it was very challenging. My 
even my um, advisor had told me, you know, because of your skin color and you're playing tennis, it's very unlikely you're gonna even make it through the pre-med courses. Wow. So, you know, that was very discouraging for me. I went home and like, I cried. Uh, but of course my parents being Caribbean background, they're like, don't listen to what other people say. Definitely. You know, <laughs> right? we came here for an opportunity. Who cares what they think? Absolutely. Um, you know, just go there and do your work and then yep. come home and that's it. So that's kind of like their mentality and you know mm -hmm. how they raised me. Um, so I went to uh, high school, then undergrad, then um, I thought I would go straight into medical school, but unfortunately that didn't work for me. I struggled with the MCAT. Um, I did take it three times. Uh, I did a few courses like Princeton Review and Kaplan. Um, and at the end of the day, it ended up being that you know, I had to do as many questions as possible because I really didn't know how to study. Like, yeah, no, I could definitely relate to that too. Um, for, for me, you know, I mean, I had my own struggles. I took the MCAT twice as well, or twice. And um, yeah, I can definitely relate because, you know, it's coming into undergrad and you take those exams. Like for me, like I did pretty well in undergrad, I had a good GPA, you know, above average, mm -hmm. especially for what, what was needed for medical acceptance and things like that. But then it, then it comes down to the MCAT, which is, as we know, not always about what you know, yeah. but it's about, you know, again, how to take a test. And that's where I struggled as, as well, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, guess same, same here. You know, same here, you know, my, my first MCAT, I can say it didn't really go the way that I wanted it to. So, you know, I remember we definitely took a, a Kaplan course um, for the second time, which helped a lot. Um, and then, you know, we were ultimately applied and got in, into med school. But, you know, kind of similar along those, those lines, we didn't get into med school our first time either. We kind of used that time to figure out, you know, how else can we work in the medical field. Um, so we, we uh, applied actually to work as phlebotomist at, the, at, at our, our hospital. Nice. So we did that for about six months, which really provided, I think, really good hands-on hands -on patient experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and really good practical skills too for drawing blood and be able to, being able to put an IV. So. Yeah, um, obviously for me, so as far as like, I'll say my, my road to medicine, it was, uh, I did do the biology major as well. And I did, I just I threw on a chemistry minor because it was like an additional class or something like that. So I was like, sure, why not? But whatever it's worth. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll say the difference is that thankfully for us is that, um, I think from day one, uh, one of the professors was also a you know counselor as well. Uh, kind of pulled us over to the side, and and he was much more encouraging. Thankfully, um, from day one, he was like, you know, I want you to take all of my hardest classes, my cell biology, and things like that, because you know I want you guys to be as ready as possible for all the challenges that are going to come. And so I was thinking about that because you know you do have to hear the story kind of similar to, to yours, where it's not you don't always have the encouragement coming from the counselors or whoever is kind of uh, men mentoring you in that space. And I think kind of for, for me, without having that initial support and that initial push, I mean, I kind of think back, you know, would I even kind of be here? Would I have been as more motivated? I really don't don't know. I and mean, I have a feeling that probably may not be because we, when you have people from the get go that are, you know, not encouraging, that are maybe trying to pull you down, um, it, it does mess with you. It does mess with your confidence and, and you know your overall outlook on the goal that you're trying to accomplish. Who was your support system? Man. Well, <laughs> so, you know, I think, well that's not fair, you got a twin. No, right. So I think that actually really kind of throughout this whole journey we've kind of really been a good support system uh, for each other. Um, you know, the, you know, through the process of applying to med school, then going through med school, and then residency now, you know, we've kind of been able to kind of be there for each other. And we really, you know, really push each each other, make sure that we, you know, are both getting our, our work done, trying to not slack off too much, and, you know, just getting things done. Um, so it's, it's really been good. Yeah, it's, you know, we're thankful to have each other, no, no doubt, because, I mean, we've been, as soon as we've been working hard and studying together, we do tend to study together a lot, but we're almost, I mean, since I would say really middle school, to be honest. Like, so we've been kind of studying together since middle school and high school. We would take a lot of the same classes and the same exams. So we're like, we're just kind of naturally just studying together and bouncing off questions and ideas off, off of each other. Um, and so coming into medical school, that was definitely helpful. Um, but then there's also like kind of like double the stress too, right? Because it's like both of you trying to make it through, so you're both stressed right. about the same stuff. 
Um, and then, you know, let's say I do a little bit better on the exam and he may, may not do as well. And then, you know, so it's like, you have those moments where, you know, it's bittersweet at times, but, um, but no, no doubt we were definitely each other's support system. Um, our family and friends were definitely, you know, having a group, a good group of friends, both inside and both in medical school and outside of medical yeah. school is very important. Um, especially the ones that are in medical school because they're going through the same thing that you're going through as well. And that's very helpful to have that um, understanding. You guys know how to really support each other there as well. So it makes between good, you know, fan, friends and families, I would have, have to say. Um, I'll say, what, what would, would you say was the biggest challenge for you, whether in residency so far, whether in medical school or before? What would you say would have been the biggest challenge? I think the biggest challenge would be just, you know, being confident in yourself um, because, I mean, when you're young, you know, you have a huge heart, you're like naive, so, you know, you think the world is perfect. Um, so I think uh, confidence is one thing that, you know, you gain through every step of the way. So from, you know, going to high school, undergrad, medical school, residency, and that kind of follows you and even you know after you finish residency when you if you start your own practice or you work in a hospital setting or wherever um so i think that would be yeah yeah same i think i think the biggest challenge for me i, I kind of alluded to it earlier was just the seeing the lack of the lack of like the, the african-american male, male presence again because you know like you go on the rotations and everything and um you know you enjoy your rotations and things but but it's when you again we don't always see yourself represented all the time in the in the position that you're striving to be in again in that in that way we don't always have that uh that motivation you know you kind of you kind of lack that and i kind of found myself lacking that at times um purely because you know i wasn't always with somebody that i could envision myself uh being um but i so i think that's just a general struggle uh throughout the, the general course i would say for me I mean, yeah, um, really, and I think that that really plays a role. Um, and I feel like really just for African Americans in general, um, the drive to want to, I guess the, the drive to go through the process of, you know, becoming a physician is really made tougher by, you know, just that lack of uh, representation. Um, so I, I definitely agree there. Yep. And then of course, again, that the impact. It was definitely a challenge to have to, you know, get get past. And then, you know, the disappointment of not necessarily getting into medical school the first time. You know, I remember going through undergrad. They tell you, you know, I mean, generally don't expect to always get in the first time. But you know, you're gonna be a little naive and say, well, I can, I can get it. You know, I'm gonna make the grades, make yeah. the scores, and and then when it doesn't happen, you're like, man, they were good. Didn't happen, but I feel like your world's coming to an yeah, end. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, but um, but then you just kind of pick yourself up and you keep on going and and uh, you know it's just taking taking um, you're not taking no for answer. I would say uh, definitely you have to have that mindset and you know you, you learn you know you learn from your failures and you learn you, you know you build uh, you know you get stronger with over time. I would say. So and then just and I want to add that even for those people that that don't get in their first time, you know, it's it's actually okay. In, in, in truth be told, um, I feel like in a way I'm kind of glad that I didn't get in the first time because I felt like having that that year off um, was actually very helpful. Um, I was able to kind of grow in, in different ways and have different experiences in the medical field before going to medical school. So I think that the overall was very important for, for me. So yeah. yeah. So now we've kind of touched on a little bit of, of where we, or how we got here, but let's talk about where are we now? What what, what are you in? So right now I'm in uh, family medicine residency. Internal medicine uh, residency myself. Yep, same here as well, internal medicine uh, setting here. Yep, and so um, if we're both, we're all three sec second years in our respective fields. And um, I would say, what kind of led you into fam family? What aspects of family do you, do you uh, like? So for me, um, my interest is in family. In addition, uh, sorry, initially, um, I wanted to do OBGYN. Uh, you know, in medical school, I pretty much like all rotations I did, but my two uh, top choices, of course, were OB and family medicine. So, you know, while gaining experience, um, shadowing and like scribing for different physicians, I just love the fact that you know I can grow with my patients. Um, I can take care of kids from right when they're born up to like oh, from a week old up until even you know 
you become like 80. <laughs> so it's just nice. I mean, it's it's part of its name, family medicine. So you know, you're you're watching each family grow. You can see your um, others, like your patient's brothers, sisters, aunts, kids. Um, and that continuity care is just really what I uh, cherish the most. And you know, you really get to know your patients very well. Um, so wherever you go, they, they follow you and they say, hey, I remember you were treating me when I was like 10 years old and now I'm like 50. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what drew me to uh, family medicine. Yeah, for me, I'll say what drew me to um... What drew me to internal medicine was more so the fact that, you know, kind of going to medical school, I was I still wasn't sure what field I really liked the most. And um, really, the good thing about internal medicine is that it, even if you don't know right off the bat, you can still have a pretty good wide range of, of uh, like fellowships and the subspecialties that you can apply to. Um, but with that, with that being said, though, uh, I'm still more primary care focused because I still like more of that primary care aspect of, of, of medicine as well. Mm -hmm. And you go ask, well, you know, well, if you want primary care, it's like I get this quick question, like, want pr primary care? You know, you know, why not family? Why internal? And I said, well, because you know, I think about it this this way. You know, that the, pedi the pediatricians specialize in, in kids. And so in turn specialize in adults. <laughs> and so I'd rather have that focus on specializing in, in adults because, you know, when it comes to taking care of kids uh, medically, that's like a whole different life volume. You know? yeah. And so I just like having that <laughs> one focus where I can just, you know, focus on the adults. And, and same, same with OBGOA for me, I just like to have that focus on the adults and that kind of one aspect of medicine and be good at that. So that's that, that would be, be my answer for that question. Yeah, yeah. similar to me, um, I was kind of more, and even in, in med school, like, I mean, as much as I enjoyed my pediatric rotation, I just kind of felt like it was harder for me to um, see to see kids, because I just kind of, I kind of felt like, felt like it was hard for me to really relate in that way, but um, it was a lot easier for, for me to kind of treat adults. So that's kind of why I chose more in terms. But um, other, other than that, you know, I, I think I'd like to add on that, you know, for anybody that's, you know, aspiring to sort of be, come to medicine, uh, be a physician, um, you know, expect it to be a challenging road. You know, you're going to have moments where you're going to be doing well and you're going to have moments where you're not. And it's not going to always be a smooth and sailing path for everybody that's out there. You're going to have those moments where you're going to feel a little bit down about things. But with that being said, you know, you see, we're all here and we've done it. And so and we're still working toward it. You know, we're, we're all in a second year of res residency, have one more year to go. And so um, hopefully by seeing us here, you know, you're, you can be inspired by what you see. Um, but with that being said, you know, along the way in the medicine, always make sure that you're doing other things outside of medicine. You know, we've talked about playing tennis. She plays tennis. We, we play tennis as well. He plays tennis, right? And um, other extracurricular activities are always important, you know, playing, the, uh, you play the piano, I've done that a little bit growing up too. Um, but again, keeping keeping things going on outside of medicine really helps you to stay more focused within medicine too. And that's what I found helpful for me, especially along, along the way. Uh, anything else you'd like to add, anybody? Um, I was gonna just add uh, one more thing. Uh, I think, you know, having a support system is, is very important. So whether it's your family, your best friend, um, a mentor, you know, just someone who can always be there to help you along the way because it is challenging. Um, there are going to be times where you feel like, I don't know, this is going to work out for me. Yeah. I got <laughs> to look into something else. Um, and then there's going to be times where you're just, you know, you just, you, you feel like you're putting in your all and you don't know if you can keep going and you need someone there to help you push. And that's okay because everyone does need somebody and it's okay sometimes to not be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and also I think time is very important. So, you know, enjoy your time, enjoy the struggles. Um, if you do have to take time off uh, to prepare to get into residency or medical school or just having that huge gap, you know, use that time to spend time with your family, use that time to maybe get involved with another activity that you've always dreamed of getting into, um, or, you know, just, just enjoying the moment for yourself. Because, you know, once you are in residency, I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very time consuming. So you're not gonna be you're gonna miss a lot of parties, events that family members have. Um, you may even have to move away out of state. So 
I just think it's very important that you you have a good support system and um, definitely cherish uh, the times, whether good or bad. Definitely, I couldn't agree more with that. <laughs> <laughs> well said, well said. All right, well, thank you all for watching uh, Black Docs Talk. This is our table discussion, uh, Road to Medicine. And uh, stay tuned, we're having more episodes coming out. And in the meantime, follow us on Facebook at Young Black Physicians, Instagram at Young Black Physicians, and here on YouTube at Young Black Physicians as well. And we've included all those links in the comment section. And please uh, feel free to like this video, comment any questions that you may have for us, and subscribe to our channel. I think that's it, right? <laughs> we'll see ya. <you. laughs>